If the Earth was squashed down to about the size of a marble, it will become a black hole. But how much would you have to squash me in order to turn me into a black hole? Let's find out, shall we? I make a new video each week exploring this strange and wonderful universe that we live in. If you enjoy these videos, then please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Every massive body in the universe has an escape velocity. I've even calculated mine. This escape velocity represents the speed that you would need to travel in order to break away from the gravity of that body. You would think that the biggest and most massive objects in the universe would have the most gravity. But gravity doesn't quite work like that. Gravity isn't really about mass. Well, it is. But it's about more than just how heavy something is. This is because gravity is calculated from an object's centre. And the further away from the centre you get, then the weaker the gravity is. Gravity then is affected not just by the mass, but also by size. In other words, the density of an object. The equation that allows us to calculate surface gravity has here in the equation the radius of the body. As this number, the radius, gets bigger, then the gravity decreases because I'm dividing by bigger and bigger numbers. This is why if I was able to squeeze the Earth down to the size of a marble, it would become a black hole. Even though the mass of the Earth wouldn't change, because I was decreasing its size, the density would be incredibly high, and as a result, the gravity would be astoundingly big. Actually, if I squash the Earth down to this size, then the gravity would be so high that it would keep on crushing itself smaller and smaller. This is enough to overcome the repulsive force between the electrons and all the other fundamental particles, and the atoms would be squashed smaller and smaller. The Earth would eventually end up as a singularity. This is a body which is infinitely small and has infinite density. We think that there is a singularity at the heart of every black hole. We've just never seen one and maybe we never will see one, but that's for my next video. So why the size of a marble? This is something called a Schwarzschild radius and here we're starting to get to the essence of black holes. The Schwarzschild radius, and apologies if I'm saying that wrong, is the size of the event horizon around the singularity. Like I said, I'll talk a little more about event horizons in my next video, but first let's think about how we work out this radius. The equation for the Schwarzschild radius is given by Rs, that's the radius that we're looking for, is equal to 2 times the gravitational constant, and we've come across that already, times the mass of the body divided by c squared, which is the speed of light squared. So how do we arrive at this equation? Well, to answer that, let's look at the equation for calculating escape velocity. This says that the escape velocity, that's the VE here, is equal to the square root of 2 times the gravitational constant times mass again, all divided by the radius. We know that for a black hole, then the escape velocity must be equal to or higher than the speed of light. This means that if we change the velocity and the escape velocity in the equation here, to be the speed of light, in other words c, then by rearranging this equation, it gives us the equation for working out the Schwarzschild radius. This then means that I can work out the Schwarzschild radius for pretty much anything. Let's see if we can break physics, shall we? As I've already mentioned, the Schwarzschild radius for the Earth is a little under a centimetre. Let's see what that radius is for some other things, including me. For our Sun, the critical radius is nearly 3 kilometers. In other words, if the Sun were to shrink down to about 3 kilometers, then the gravitational force would keep crushing it until the Sun became a black hole with a singularity at the center. Our Sun isn't massive enough, however, for it to become a black hole on its own. Let's try some other objects. Well, what about me? I weigh 75 kilograms, so my Schwarzschild radius is 1.14 times 10 to the minus 25 meters. Just to put that into a little perspective, that's about 10 times smaller than the smallest known fundamental particle, the neutrino. We're not finished there though. I'm sure we can go smaller than that. And for no other reason than I've made an orange model for my last video and never used it, let's see what the Schwarzschild radius for an orange would be. Here I'm gonna assume that an orange has a mass of 100 grams or 0.1 kilograms, and this means it has a Schwarzschild radius of 1.485 times 10 to the minus 28 of a meter. 
10,000 times smaller than a neutrino. We can still go smaller, I've not broken physics yet. Well, a grape has a mass of 5 grams. This then would have a Schwarzschild radius of 7.43 times 10 to the minus 30 meters, and a P weighing 0.1 grams would need to get to 1.485 times 10 to the minus 31 meters. And now we're nearly getting to break physics. In reality, we don't need to worry about this happening. Even an evil genius would be unable to make this happen. Without the massive force of gravity crushing a star much bigger than our sun, we can't make the matter squash into itself as much as would be needed to form a black hole. The Pauli exclusion principle forbids it, or at least states that the amount of energy needed to make it happen is far beyond what we can possibly hope to generate, so we don't need to worry about items in our fruit bowl randomly turning themselves into black holes. What about one of my cells? The average human cell has a mass of about 1 nanogram. That's this much. This means that the Schwarzschild radius for one of my cells will be 1.485 times 10 to the minus 39 of a metre. If you've already watched my video on the Planck length, and if not, go and watch it, you'll know that the smallest size that it's possible to get is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 35. So this Schwarzschild radius is about 10,000 times smaller than the Planck length. And there we have it, I've broken physics. Well, this is just theoretical, so physics is safe, don't worry. Right, okay, it's time to stop crushing things down out of existence and return to our normally sized Earth with the density of, well, the Earth. And until next time, thank you for watching.